What's up guys, MKBHD here. Okay, pausing on all the Galaxy Fold hype for just a second. This is the Huawei P30 Pro. This is the phone I've been using for weeks leading up to all the Galaxy Fold stuff and might as well keep using after it. This is the phone that you've either never heard of or you've heard all about it and are probably wondering if these cameras are worth the hype. I gotta say, the P30 Pro is the best phone not sold in the US. That's just facts. And that's of course gonna hurt its popularity here. But if you're gonna get one, which you still can, you should know all about the rest of it too. I mean, what people are really here for is the camera and we'll get to that. But the rest of the phone's pretty damn good too. So the easiest way to think about this phone is it's an upgraded design of the P20 Pro, but with all the best features of the Mate 20 Pro. So aesthetically, you can tell Huawei definitely knows they struck gold with this really unique triple color gradient look. I'd bet money that was their number one seller of the P20 Pro because now all of them have this look. So there's a red gradient one, uh, this pearly white gradient one I've seen on videos. And then this one here is my personal favorite, a sort of a green to blue to purple Aurora starburst kind of thing. Reminds me actually of one of those classic windows wallpapers. Remember this one with the fish? Just me? Okay. But yeah, no, it stands out. If you're about that psychedelic look, this is the one for you. If not, you can easily go full matte black everything with a skin from our channel sponsor, Dbrand. So if you'd like to keep it low key like that, I'll drop a link to those below. So Huawei, like I've mentioned, has sort of taken after Samsung a little bit with their aesthetic, but they've also carved out some things that are their own. Some of them for the better, some of them not so much. So the psychedelic triple color thing, sure, that's all you, Huawei. Uh, this sort of trapezoidal shape on the top and bottom, they own that. The shape of the camera bump, they sort of own that too, but it's pretty huge. This thing legit wobbles on a table to the point where it's actually noticeable, and that could bother some people. Uh, the speaker down here at the bottom, it's consistent with other phones, and it's decently loud, but doesn't sound great, and it's disappointingly really easy to accidentally block with a single finger, and there's no earpiece speaker to balance that out. And then the whole button situation is kind of interesting. So first of all, the power and volume rocker are on the same side. Kind of wish they weren't. Huawei keeps doing this, but I wish the volume rocker was on the other side, which is just blank. And then on most phones, a double tap of the power button is your camera shortcut. On this phone, double tapping the power button doesn't do that. It just sleeps and wakes really fast. It's actually double pressing the volume down button, which gets you into the camera, unless you're on the home screen, in which case double pressing volume down just lowers your volume, so there's no camera shortcut. Then holding down the power button isn't for shutting down, that'll get you to Google Assistant. So that accented power button, as a long press, it sort of doubles as a voice assistant trigger, and then power and volume down is still a screenshot, power and volume up starts the screen recording, and then to turn the phone off entirely, you have to hold down the power button, don't say anything to Google Assistant, and then keep waiting for another two or three seconds to get the shutdown menu that pops up over Google Assistant. So that's just a little bit of a taste of the finickiness of this phone, but that's just the Huawei way. It's the, the Huawei way. Hardware-wise though, if you like a phone that does check a lot of boxes, this one does it. You got your premium build quality, there's IP68 water resistance, there's expandable storage, your high-end specs, it's all there. It also has the earpiece speaker behind the glass, so this whole top third of the phone is the earpiece, and it even tells you where to put up your ear to listen to it, and it doesn't buzz at all like LG's did, so it sounds great. It doesn't double as a second front-facing speaker, though. I think some people would trade it for a real speaker so that you didn't have such an easily mutable source of audio, but hey, that's the Huawei way. But you know what else is behind the glass is that fingerprint reader. Uh, it's decent at best. I found it fine. It's optical, so it's another one of those first-generation fingerprint readers that works about as well as any other, like the one in the OnePlus 6T. I actually found it to be faster than the ultrasonic one in the Galaxy S10, but I think a lot of the optical ones are. What I do like is that it's smart about showing you where the reader is as soon as you pick up the phone, so you can quickly unlock it while the screen is off, uh, and it's pretty good about that but it still has to shine that annoyingly bright light. So in-screen fingerprint readers are still in the early stages of actually getting good. Anyway, the display is a good one too. It's very bright and very high resolution, looks great for videos and games. It's not the brightest, but it is definitely viewable outdoors. I might be starting to get over the sort of bleeding over the edge thing that they've done with this phone and Samsung's done a little bit. I'm kind of torn on it because it get a little extra glare on the sides, but it still looks really cool. But it definitely hasn't been anywhere near stopping me from using the phone and liking it. I just think I actually wouldn't mind if it was flat. The screen is so nice anyway. And then sadly, no headphone jack in this phone. RIP, sorry headphone jack fans. The P30 does have one, the P30 Pro does not. Same thing as last year. 
Um, that's about the only box this phone doesn't check, that along with uh, stereo speakers. And the performance is all around excellent. So it's super responsive and fast. And thanks to the Kirin 980 and eight gigs of RAM, I've had no slowdowns or any questionable lag or anything with the P30 Pro, which is awesome. It's one of my favorite things about this phone. And it actually goes hand in hand with the incredible battery life. I didn't even mention the battery life. This 4,200 milliamp hour cell is the new undisputed heavyweight champ for battery in smartphones, period. I mean, I'm ending days with 40, 45% left. I'm getting seven plus hours of screen on time on heavy days. I don't even worry about when I charge it anymore. I just plug it in whenever I feel like it. This is the champ. This is what you want. You wanna never have to worry about the battery when you're using your phone. If you're a heavy user or someone who travels a lot, that's awesome for the peace of mind. And honestly, if you're a light user, this is a two day phone, comfortably, for real two full days of use. A lot of people have mentioned Huawei phones are notoriously very aggressive with killing background apps to extend battery, which is pretty true, but I feel like they can get away with it in my case because it reopens apps so fast. So I, I give a big thumbs up here to performance and to battery life. So the big dark horse for me right now with Huawei phones, and it always has been, is their software. So this guy's running their EMUI skin on top of Android Pie. Just some people like it, some people don't and I'm in that second camp. But there's a ton of great features. I love the dark mode, so if you go under battery settings, there's a toggle to darken interface colors and it permeates throughout the whole OS, so it's easy on the eyes. Dark mode is basically everywhere. I also like that in any app, you can swipe across the navigation bar to enter one-handed mode. And this is a gesture that you can do with one hand and it makes it easier to type or just scroll or reach things in the corners. It's kind of like Apple's reachability, but I think a better easier gesture. But there's also things I just don't like. So the settings app is still a clutter. It's hard to navigate and I wish they'd organize it a little bit better or clean it up. Uh, then there's all the Huawei bloat. There's pre-installed apps. When I'm pinching to zoom, it triggers Huawei's high touch, a service that I just don't ever want to use. So you got to disable things like that. Another thing, if you have multiple notifications in most other versions of Android I'm used to, you can expand the notification to open one instance of it or tap the whole notification group to open that app. But on this phone, you can't do that tap to just open the app, so it expands them every time, requiring an extra tap for me to open. That annoyed me. And then small details like zooming in with the camera app strangely takes two hands because of where they put the zoom slider at the bottom when pretty much every other phone has put careful attention into making sure I can zoom with one hand. And there's just always been this constant weird bug where sometimes I press the home button to go home and it just doesn't go home, it doesn't respond. I think that's like a pretty basic thing it should be able to do every time. This happens every day, multiple times per day for me. It's hard for me to get on board with that. So this phone is propped up and held back by the software at the same time. Like it's definitely not that they don't have enough features or customization, there's plenty. It's just that it feels like the user experience isn't the main focus when designing all this stuff. Like Samsung had the same problem. They redesigned all their stuff. One UI is now pretty great. So I'd say Huawei is due for that same update. So all of that brings us to the main head turning feature. The reason you're all here, the reason you may have heard about this phone in the first place, and that's these cameras. There are four sensors on the back, but really three cameras. The main sensor, the ultra wide, the periscope zoom, and then there's a fourth time of flight sensor that helps with depth measurement. So the two main features that are really catching eyes about the P30 Pro's cameras, and rightfully so, are the zoom range and the low light performance. So the zoom range I kind of feel is super borderline between useful feature and gimmick. So the periscope zoom, which actually has a fascinating physical structure as shown by the Jerry Rig Everything Teardown, it will do a 5X optical zoom, and then you can keep going to 10X, which will sharpen and use AI and combining with the main sensor to try to be lossless, but I've found that's already starting to get softer. And then you can keep going 20X, 30X, 40X, all the way up to 50 times, which is kind of ridiculous, where most smartphones will go maybe 8X to 10X zoom tops. So like, yes, it does actually work, and it has generally pretty impressive results, but most of the time, do people really actually zoom in that much? Like here's how far 50 times really is. Uh, it's absurd, like how many photos do you really take like that? Are you a spy? Is this really super creep mode? It's funny, there was so much attention on it that I actually found myself like knowing I had this feature, taking tons of zoomed in photos much more often than I usually do, even though I've had a telephoto camera in smartphones before. But I think I topped out at around 10X zoom before it stopped being crisp and useful and started being soft and gimmicky. Still funny though. Uh, I definitely found that the ultra wide was way more useful for when you're close to large subjects 
or you want to change up the perspective a bit or do a bigger landscape shot. It does a great job of minimizing vignetting and distortion. Uh, I use this more often than I actually ever went past 10x zoom. But then the night mode. The night mode is the real game changer here, which was way more useful and impressive to me. So go into any dark environment, first of all. Go out at night or in a dark room or a dimly lit you know, restaurant, anything like that. The viewfinder right off the bat is showing more than most. And then you snap the photo and let it process for a quick second. And boom, it's showing the scene with way more light than real life, usually showing more than the actual human eye is seeing. So I, I did a couple comparisons myself with the iPhone XS, which doesn't have a night mode, versus the Pixel 3's night sight, which has been pretty much class leading by a long shot up until this month, and then versus the P30 Pro, literally in auto mode, and the results were absolutely sick. So the RYYB, D Bayer, and image processing are clearly making a really big difference here. Images from the P30 Pro in literally basically pitch black look like you're shining a light into your scene. It's wild, and it's actually kind of addicting and fun to play with. The only downside is the fact that it does this in auto mode all the time, which means sometimes your dimly lit bar shots will actually look too bright. You know, it's funny, during Huawei's presentation of this phone, they showed pretty much exclusively like nighttime and low light shots, especially when comparing to their competition, to the point where they pretty much didn't even talk about daylight photography at all. Um, not that they're bad in daylight. Of course, the Mate 20 Pro just won the blind smartphone camera test, but it's just kind of funny. They're so dialed in with low light that they almost don't even talk about daylight stuff. But I think that's actually a pretty good idea. That's where most people take a lot of photos. I will say daytime photos from the P30 Pro fell in line with what we saw from the Mate 20 Pro. They're coming down from their hyper overprocessed, sharpened land into a more toned down, realistic look for sure. It still loves to overexpose, but that can be fixed. And the 40 megapixel sensor downsampling to 10 megapixel photos still turns out plenty detailed. I feel like I can still identify Huawei color science though on site because especially with the reds, it's a little bit behind the rest. Compare it like this shot, for example, with the skin tones on the Pixel versus the P30 Pro, it consistently has this sort of magenta cast on skin that's actually hard to edit out. So with that in mind, if we're talking about overall image quality, the P30 Pro still not quite the best. And we've had this conversation plenty of times now. Oh, is this the new best smartphone camera? In a lot of ways it is, but in some ways it isn't. Turns out the best smartphone camera is a little more nuanced than that. There is more than one best smartphone camera. And that's not a cop-out, that's just true. If you just want the absolute best image quality and nothing else, then the best smartphone camera for that person is the Pixel 3. It still is. It has the best color science especially, and then there's dynamic range and detail and white balance. Uh, but that's in an aging phone that's starting to get kind of slow and there's also not multiple cameras. But if you take a lot of low light shots and you want the best, fastest low light camera, the best smartphone camera for that person is the P30 Pro. If you want the most versatile smartphone camera, the best smartphone camera is the P30 Pro. But if you want the best video camera in any smartphone, the best smartphone camera is the iPhone XS by a mile. So you gotta know what you want in a smartphone camera that'll determine what's the best for you. P30 Pro is awesome. It's probably the best right now for most people but if you happen to be someone who wants to take a lot of video, that's an area where this falls short. Daytime photography, you're gonna get better image quality out of the Pixel camera. So those things are worth knowing about. And that whole summary kind of works for the P30 Pro as a whole phone too. You gotta know what you want. If you want a phone that has an amazing battery life and then checks pretty much all the boxes, you don't worry too much about speaker quality, this is an awesome phone. If you want a great fast camera, you take a lot of low light shots like a lot of people do, this is gonna be really impressive, um, but yeah. That's, that's what you gotta know. This is a great phone. So if you're cool with buying a Huawei phone in 2019 with that huge asterisk and you know about it, then uh, this is a great step up. Until the next one, thanks for watching. Catch you guys later. Peace.